guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is the hardware tour of the HTC Snap. This is the unlocked European version, which will work in the US, uh, but not with 3G data. In Europe, it'll work fine with 3G data, and of course, the Snap will see a release on many global carriers. In the US, it'll be on Sprint and T-Mobile and Verizon, and you'll see it in Europe on the major carriers there too, uh, coming out soon. So let's take a tour of the device. The device is characterized by this kind of circle theme. This is because of the inner circle feature. So these buttons here are circular. You have a circular trackball here that we'll talk about later. And the buttons are kind of rounded on the edges. They're not exactly circular. They kind of have a, a squarish rectangular shape to them. Um, and, and of course, we'll, we'll talk more about the keyboard in a minute. But it's a nice looking device. It's covered in a rubber coating, just like the original T-Mobile Dash. So it feels very solid in hand. It doesn't feel like you're going to drop it. It's not as sheen as a, um, an HTC Touch Pro 2 or a Diamond 2, where there is just shiny materials galore. Um, but that's a good thing, because you're not going to get fingerprints on the um, HTC Snap. The, the, the screen is not touched, so you're not touching the screen. And, uh, you know, you spend most of your time on the hardware buttons, which is a matte finish, and you're not going to pick up fingerprints there. So let's zoom in a little bit. Up here on the top, we have the LED indicator light with a speaker, and to the right of that is the light sensor, and the light sensor oddly doesn't control screen brightness, it only turns on and off the backlit key. Um, the screen is 2.4 inches diagonal, which is admittedly kind of small, um, but these non-touch screen devices have smaller screens, and that's not that big of a deal. Um, compared to the rest of the device, it takes up about half of the portion here, so it's not too bad. The resolution is 240 down and 320 across. Again, resolution's kind of low, but because the screen size is so small, the text is still crisp and whatnot. Now let's go down to this area. We have this nice brushed metal aluminum piece here that surrounds the hardware buttons. Here's call start, soft key, home, and then the D-pad, which is actually a trackball. It's very interesting. You can adjust the sensitivity. It's a nice sensation because, as with other Windows Mobile standard devices, you have to move your thumb in this kind of fashion to move around on the screen. But with the Snap, you have a smaller range of motion, which is good, and it lends to higher productivity, I think. Uh, here we have a back or OK button, followed by a, another soft key button, and the call and key. Now let's take a look at this keyboard. This keyboard will definitely take a lot of getting used to. At a quick glance, you would think it's such a fantastic keyboard because the letters are big, they're offset, there is, they're in a kind of smiley face-like pattern so that it's more ergonomic. But mm, that's not the case. I've only been using this for a few hours, but so far I'm not too impressed by the keyboard. And one of the biggest reasons is because this key here should actually be the A key. If you look at any other QWERTY device, like the Q9, the A key goes all the way to the edge. Or you look at the Blackjack 2, the A key goes all the way to the edge. So I'm constantly hitting the tab button thinking that it's an A, making me have to look at the keyboard when I type which really slows me down. It's something to get used to, but um, something you definitely want to know about. Now, the numbers are embedded here in the letters, so if you want to dial a number, you just hold down the function key. Or if you're on the main screen, the home screen, and you want to dial somebody's number, you can start dialing here, or you can just type their name. And in the software tour, we're going to talk more about that. Now, in terms of buttons we have to use, we can get into the camera quickly. We can get into the messenger quickly, Windows Live Messenger, uh, email application, inner circle, which allows you to filter out email and just see the email from five or six or three people that you only want to correspond with so that you kind of cut out the junk and the clutter and just respond to people that are emailing you that you think are important. Um, up here is the lock button. So you tap and hold this to lock the device. And the unlock sequence, and we'll talk about this in the software tour, is you press this button, the soft key button, and the Q again. So that is the keyboard. It's going to take some getting used to, um, but we'll talk about how the experience is after a few days in the full review coming up on pocketnow.com. Here on the bottom, we have the microphone. Let's go over to the side, and while we're on the side, let's talk a little bit about how thick this is. This is a very, very thin device. It's only 12 millimeters thick, and as a comparison, the Q9 is about 0.2 millimeters thinner, but you really can't tell. Um, it's, it's much, much thinner than the Blackjack 2. It's thinner than um, the Dash, actually, the original T-Mobile Dash, the, the HTC X Caliber, by a small amount. But it feels very thin in hand. It slides into the pocket very easily, and that's a really great thing. So let's continue on the outside here. Here we have a volume rocker. Then we have a lanyard hook there. This helps you get the back battery cover off, and we'll take that off in a sec. 
Over on the other side, we have nothing except there's a little bit of a, there's a little cover here which will reveal the charging port, which is used for syncing, charging, and audio. Of course, this doesn't have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, so you're gonna wanna get a converter jack or you can use the headphones that come with the, the snap, which includes that plug. And let's look on the back. On the back, we have the, the external speaker that's used for the speakerphone or if you're listening to music. And then we have a nice brushed metal piece, actually the same sort of design as you'll find over here, um, surrounding the two megapixel camera. And there's no flash on the camera, unfortunately. And as I mentioned, the entire back is that rubbery coating that was made famous by the Excalibur, the T-Mobile Dash. It really feels solid in hand. So to take off the battery cover, you kind of got to stick your fingernail in there and take, take it off like this. Now down here you will find the uh, micro SD slot. Unfortunately, it's under the battery cover. This is a trend for all HTC devices. They're doing under the battery cover for the uh, micro SD card. Interestingly enough, the battery on the snap is the same battery that comes on the HTC Touch Pro 2. So we're expecting really, really fantastic battery life from the 1500 milliamp hour battery. Um, of course, we're going to talk all about battery life in the full review after we've used it for more than uh, more than a few hours. So first impressions of the device is that if you had a Dash before or the Excalibur, this is going to be an awesome upgrade for you, especially when it hits all the carriers at subsidized prices. Right now you can get this at clove.co.uk for 255 British pounds, which comes out to about $415. And considering this is a brand new phone, that's a really good price um, for an unlocked device like this that just came out. So coming up in the software tour, we're going to go through all of the enhancements. We're going to talk about the HTC Inner Circle feature. And soon after that, we will post the full review on pocketnow.com. I'll put a link up on the video for the unboxing in case you missed that on the HTC Snap. That's it for now.